It has been a long 11 weeks of waiting, and the wait is finally over. It's race week! We're all eager to figure out who's going to be at the top of the standings, both drivers and constructors. Will it be Mercedes, with its drivers Lewis Hamilton and George Russell after their recent bold move to change the W14 again? Will they bounce back from last year's poor season? Stay tuned as we unravel these bold changes on the W14. The 2022 season started with the introduction of new technical regulations that targeted the car's aerodynamics. This was a move by the FIA to make it possible for cars to follow each other closely when racing. In previous years, cars would lose a significant amount of downforce whenever they were too close to another car. This was the direct result of the car in front creating dirty air, which can be dangerous because less downforce means less grip from the tires on the track. Major changes were made in the front wing the nose of the car, and the rear wing designs, which had to be rolled at the ends as to force the air higher, thus eliminating the dirty air and making it easy for the car behind to pursue closely. With the new regulations, the shapes and lengths of the cars would change. It was therefore no surprise that during preseason testing in Bahrain, we saw completely different looking cars in the grid. Much to the relief of many who feared the cars would almost be similar, and notably was the Mercedes W13, which sparked a lot of interest in the paddocks and was a major talking point. A revolutionary and innovative interpretation of the regulations by the team ended in a car with a zero side pod design. This hadn't been seen before, at least since the introduction of side pods. It was almost unthinkable for a Formula One car to be without them. If you're new to the sport, I know you're wondering why side pods are so important, and uh, here's why. Formula One is all about speed. For teams, the faster their car is, the better chances they have to be fighting for the championship. With such high speeds, sometimes beyond 300 kilometers per hour, engines tend to heat up from all that work, therefore cooling is mucho importante. Otherwise, the cars would melt and most likely kill the drivers in the process. And then we wouldn't have Formula One. The side pods host the radiators, whose work is to cool the engine. In addition, they direct air into the engine for further cooling. They also play an important role in aerodynamics. Now, if you don't know, aerodynamics is the most important part in considering designing an F1 car and can determine whether a car is on the front row, fighting for wins, or at the back of the field. The side pod design determines the airflow around the car, which helps create downward pressure to ensure that cars have grip when tackling corners. You can see why the decision to have a zero side pod design on a car raised eyebrows, to the extent of some questioning whether it was legal. And it was. There were only two possible outcomes. Either their design would work, or it wouldn't. And we're all eager to see how the W13 would perform. At least we were. And no sooner had it hit the ground in Bahrain than problems being discovered. The car was prone to bouncing, making it almost impossible and painful for drivers to drive. Many claimed that the lack of side pods was the reason that this car was bouncing. However, the team was very adamant that this wasn't the case. Last month, the team launched their new car, the W14, and to the surprise of many, the car retained the zero side pod design. The expectation was that they would incorporate side pods into the car, but the team chose to stay true to their design. Team principal Toto Wolf said, I think it's important to be bold in this sport, and I'm still proud of the solutions that were put on the car last year. Our side pod design is not something that we believe that was fundamentally the reason why we didn't perform. We've analyzed it back and forth, and as you can see, the side pods are still very different from any other car. We believe this is not a performance relative part. Obviously, there is no such thing as a holy cow. We're looking at everything. These are the first iterations of the side pods, and after a few races, they'll probably change a little. But as Mike says, if you change a concept, you can end up going three steps backwards or take two forward. I love the fact that we stayed bold and continued to follow what the science says for us. The team said that they are not one to copy other teams, unlike what we've seen with other teams on the grid who have copied, to a significant extent, the Ferrari and Red Bull sidepod designs. They reckoned that the W13 had its good aspects, and they decided to retain the sidepod concept while adjusting what didn't work for them in the car. The team's technical director, Mike Elliott, said this during the launch. At times last year, we were questioning ourselves and saying, you know, have we made a major mistake? Do we need to change what we're fundamentally doing? But I think we know if we go and sort of start again, you know you're going to start further backwards, so you start making those right decisions. And I think although we had problems with the car last year, there's a lot of goodness in the car, and there's a lot of things that did work for us. The W14 has been ranked as the most beautiful car on the grid this season. 
This is due to the fact that they returned to the black livery, which the team donned in the 2020 and 2021 seasons. Unlike before, when the reason was only able to support Black Lives Matter movement, this time it's also an effort to reduce the overall weight of the car. A large surface in the car is just exposed carbon fiber. During the launch, Elliot said that the team retained the DNA of its predecessor, but also made major changes that they can only hope will be uh, of help in their quest to win more races this year. So what are these changes exactly? For very obvious reasons, not all design changes can be made public. However, we can analyze what's visible to the human eye, for sure. Many of the W14's extremely distinctive characteristics from the previous model are carried over, such as the way the narrow vertical radiator inlets, the sizable section of exposed 4, and the way it employs the exposed upper side impact bar to guide airflow downward over the top of the side pods. On the other hand, the lower side pod outlines have been rounded in profile, fattened in the front, and lengthened in the back, a redesign set to improve the airflow's passage to the back of the car. Instead of blending seamlessly with the engine cover, the side pods now stand apart from it thanks to a tall cooling cannon that directs radiator exhaust out of the back, either side of the exhaust. The cooling outlet is positioned higher, enhancing flow into the coke bottle region and over the surfaces around the engine cover as well as clearing a path underneath for the suspension parts. Additional support comes from the cooling gills on the side pods upper surface and the engine cover shelf both of which may be adjusted according to track conditions. The front of the W14 is distinguished by a distinctive front wing shape and the attachment of the nose flaps. The profile hollowed out at the bottom of the nose to send more air to the bottom half of the car is, I mean, just interesting, right? I mean, see, in preparation for its new campaign, Mercedes is planning to roll out a significant upgrade, package several races into one season. Speculation had arisen that the team might be developing an alternative side pod concept similar to those used by Red Bull and Ferrari. Will the team be going back to their word to retain the zero side pod concept? Well, Mercedes has been quick to squash these claims, disappointing the majority of fans who still think that having side pods is a better option for the team. Elliot spoke to Ted Kravitz, a Sky Sports F1 analyst, and here's what he had to say. There's body work coming, and it will look different. It won't look like someone else's car, it'll look like an evolution of ours. That's on its way. When questioned about whether Mercedes will adopt Red Bull's side pod design, Elliott responded, That's not in our current plans. Adopting a competitor's design would set them back at least 12 months and they would have a lot of catching up to do, hence the decision to stick with their design. Hamilton has acknowledged that Mercedes has a mountain to climb in order to catch up with Red Bull and Ferrari moving into the new season, but Elliot is optimistic that Mercedes' advancements over the course of the year will enable them to recover from a disastrous 2022 and return to title contention. Do you think that Mercedes has what it takes to win the championship this year? Share with us your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing F1 news. Goodbye for now.